Hello? Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your presence in this place with us today, your house. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, it's my prayer that each one of us, every day, would be able to approach your throne like these little ones, faith like a child, unjaded by the world, just with such enthusiasm and excitement about being called a child of God. Lord, I pray that as we continue through this worship service, Lord, that, that you would see that in our hearts, that we would be excited about who you are and what it is you've done for us. And Lord, allow us to worship you through laughter and smiles, but also through the tears. It's in your precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. Will you stand as we sing together, Majesty? It's page 297 in your hymnal and on the wall. Will you stand and sing? <laughs> Thank you so much for responding. 
Uh, I do have some announcements for you, uh, some things I'd like to cover. Wednesday night meals. Uh, Wednesday night meals are happening. Uh, we're meeting over in the Great Hall. I thought she was coming to like tell me something that I forgot. <laughs> for those of you that aren't aware, that is my wife, Angel. And she commonly tells me things that I forget, which is a wonderful thing. So she is a helpmate. Uh, Wednesday night meals are meeting. Uh, please sign up for those. Over the past couple of weeks, we've seen an increase in attendance, and we've added more. Um, we've called and added more onto the caterer each week, uh, but we're getting to that point where we really need to know if you're going to come to Wednesday night meals. I think last week we had a little over 80 that were in attendance, which is glorious, and thank you so much for being here. But there is a sign-up sheet right out by the Welcome Center, uh, and so the um, uh, this week, spring salad with strawberries, mandarin oranges, oriental dressing, herb baked chicken breast, roasted red potatoes, fresh green beans, and strawberry or chocolate cake. You're not going to get it any better anywhere else. So come on Wednesday, <laughs> fellowship together, go to Bible study. Uh, we have children's activities, we have youth activities, we have adult activities. There is one thing that we do need on Wednesday night. We need some folks to help teach our preschoolers. If you would like to do that, please talk to me, let me know, and we can get you plugged in. I think last week we had seven or eight preschoolers that were in there. Um, it's easy. You may think that it's not, but it is. It really is. They have craft time, they have coloring time, they have game time, and as an adult, I like to do all those things too. So let me know, and we can get you plugged into that. Some other things that are happening. Food on Fridays. We as a church are helping a local school uh, that is in need. Uh, and providing some food for the weekends uh, for families that are in need. If you would like to help deliver that food or even pack the food, let us know. There's a sign-up sheet right out by the Welcome Center, and we'd love to have you uh, participate in that. There's a lot of other things going on. Please look through your bulletin and see how you can get more involved in what the church is doing. And the last thing I want to mention is that we do have a special call business meeting that's going to immediately follow the service today. Uh, there's going to be a reception time as well, so when we finish up our service, we'll excuse Mark and Diane and allow them to go and, and begin to, to nibble on some snacks that are over there for you. We'll have our business meeting, and then we'll go over and we'll fellowship with them. So, like I said, a lot of other things going on. Please make sure you look through your book. Let's stand and sing some more, you all. This is the Name of Jesus Medley.
As we enter into a time of meditation and prayer, allow us all to remember that the name of the Lord is powerful. The name of the Lord is strong. The name of the Lord is a mighty tower. And when we put our trust and our faith, when we put our confidence in him, in his ways, even though we don't understand, there's peace that comes along with that. There may not be peace around us, there may not be peace in the world, but there can be peace inside us, there can be peace in our hearts and in our thoughts. And we can rest in the knowledge that he is not only creator, but sustainer of this world. And so this morning, as we enter into this time of meditation, allow me just to bring two things to the forefront of your mind, and then we'll spend a little bit more time praying each and every one of us by ourselves. But please pray for the situation going on in Europe right now. Pray for Ukraine. Pray for the families that are there. Pray for the refugees that are fleeing that. Pray for everyone that's involved. I know personally a missionary family that's there. Pray for them. Pray that God's will would be done. But more than that, pray that hearts would be broken for what's happening. And then secondly, I ask that you lift the Joneses up in prayer for not only strength for today, but for the days to come. And then ask the Lord how you can be a helpmate to them, how you can come alongside and serve someone who has served us for so many years and reach out just be a friend let's pray Heavenly Father, I know that all across your house today, different things have come to people's minds, different prayer requests have been laid upon their hearts. And Lord, it's my hope that they were faithful to lift those up to you. They would ask that your will would be done in each one of those circumstances. But Lord, more than that, that they would ask how they can help, how they can reach out, how they can fill a need, Lord, I thank you for this church family. I thank you for those that you have gathered here this morning. Lord, I thank you for the strength that comes from being able to lean on one another. And Lord, I pray that as we continue to move forward and to do your will and your work in your world, that you would guide our steps, direct our thoughts, and our, allow our hands just to be fruitful. Lord, there's so many things that we can ask you for, but more than that, Lord, just allow us to be thankful for what it is you've done in each and every one of our lives. It's in your precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. good to see so many faces out here. <clears throat> I know Mark and Diane are glad to see you and y'all may not realize it but <clears throat> Mark 
we're going back to Cowboy Church for a little bit this morning. <laughs> some of y'all are Texan, I know, and understand. Uh, some of you may not. And, and just to clear it up, there's a lot of folks say I have an accent. I don't have one. Y'all just listen funny. <laughs> so pay, pay attention now. Uh, <clears throat> Texas is a land of culture and custom. I even talk different than some of you. <clears throat> uh, Mark's going to be back into a place, Mark and Diane both, that they've been before, I know, but this is a little bit of, of a refresher for them, I think. And, and y'all know, they know, that Texas is a whole nother country. What do you think, Nancy? Is it correct? Is it correct? <laughs> Another Texan there for you. Well, the Cowboy Church isn't what you see right here. It's different. Uh, the ones I've been to back home uh, look and smell maybe a little bit like a barn. Uh, <laughs> floors probably have hay or straw on it because that's what they had been using the building for, or many times it's just a big tent, a big tent. <clears throat> But anyway, uh, if you go to one, you want to look around and find the swamp coolers real quick because it gets warm. You get lots of good singing there in the, in the church, good preaching, good music. Uh, it, it's uh, it's a, a good place to be. It, I really enjoy it. Now, being you know from Texas, I, all my cousins have double names, and I'm not going to tell you what mine is. But we need to get Mark all set up. Now, if you don't know, his real name is Mark William. So, you know, we have some options. We could say Willie Bill. <laughs> I don't know that I want to do that to him right now. Maybe we'll just call him Bubba. <laughs> Bubba Mark. Uh, Nan Nancy, we, we can see him at that cowboy church, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, Mark's been here a while, and I, I really noticed when he first came that we, we had a strong leader. We had somebody that could preach. You, you could listen to him and get the, the straight word. You know, he gave it to us straight, and you could, you could count on it. Uh, it was really good. One of the good, strong points that I, I noticed <clears throat> He had a lot of care for the flock, or if you're in Texas, you might say herd. But he would he'd be there and show up when you least expected him and needed to be there. So I appreciated that, Mark. A lot of good times that uh, you helped me. Didn't know you were even doing that by just being there. Uh, and I'm 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 a fixing to tell you what was really good. And uh, we wanted to, when I first got to know him, we, we got to watch a pure D good Texas football game. Nat naturally, that's going to be the Cowboys. He had to be good if that was his prime. That, that was really okay. Uh, if you go to a Cowboy church, you can have lots of good preaching and singing and things like that. And when it's over, since all those folks generally came in their truck, maybe with a trailer and a horse with them, they're going to go out, out back where the good parking was, and they'll probably drop a tailgate or two, and uh, before you know what, you got a whole mess of uh, chopped beef, maybe some friolis, and uh, that's beans if you don't know. Uh, maybe some uh, rice and tortillas, you know, it's, it's good eating. But then after all of that, they're going to go home, take their trucks and trailers and practice rodeo all afternoon. So Cowboy Church is a special place. You get the best of all of it. Uh, after, after you, or before you got to the, the tailgate part, you'd see folks leaving. They'd, you, and you could follow them real good. The, the uh, buckle bunnies would run out with their cowboys and, and get things started. And then uh, 
get the truck loaded and ready to go. I could tell y'all a whole bunch more stories about the oil field, but I won't do that. That'll be another chapter. But I do want to say something to Mark and Diane especially. <clears throat> I'll stay here because you can probably hear me a little better. Uh, I know Mark's been there and he may have some of this, but I don't know it and I'm gonna give, fix him up. Uh, he's got to have a hat. If we, were, if we were in cowboy church, all you folks would feel really out of place because you ain't got a hat. Uh, it's, it's one of those things of Texas. Texas is belt buckles, boots, and hats. You gotta have them all. If you hadn't noticed or don't know, this is the way you dress up in cowboy world. Blue jeans and a white shirt. That's what it takes. So Mark, <clears throat> first thing that I want to do is, is give you a hat. Now this isn't just any old hat, and I'm trying to help you here a little bit. If you got a brand new hat and go downtown, they're gonna think you're a drugstore cowboy, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> This, this, cat, this hat's got character. It, it looks like it's hard worn, and it has been, but it's got the character that goes with it. Uh, and that's more than just me. So uh, <clears throat> you keep this, somebody probably won't buy it off of you. It's, it's, it's a high dollar hat when they look like that. <laughs> so let me give you that. Now wait a minute. Knowing what I know about you, I know you need this. This is a cowboy belt buckle. <laughs> uh, Dallas cowboy belt buckle. <laughs> From my collection. <laughs> uh, we, we're going to miss you. We, uh, we love you. We're glad you've been here. Miss you. <laughs> Texans today. <clears throat> you know what today is? It's a double hanky day. <clears throat> I brought two, but I had to give one up. You doing all right, Bubba? <laughs> Our first lady. <clears throat> I'm going to get through this kill me, but I'm going to get through it. Mark, you came here, and we grew to love you. You followed a man that had been here for 40-some years. That's not easy for anybody. I'll never forget the, lay, the, the day we got the letter that Temple was retiring. And I told Kathy, I said, man, I feel sorry for the next guy. <laughs> I thought he'd last maybe two years. We've been through some battles together, but we made them. I always know I could look over to my left or my right, <clears throat> and you would be there. You had my back. And I hope you knew that I had yours. <clears throat> I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you had a lot of adversity. Diane, thank you for not giving up on us. Because I know you should have probably said and thought many times, we're out of here. <laughs> we're gone. <laughs> but you hung in there with us, and we thank you for that. You showed your grace and your mercy and your love toward us. And we love you all more than you'll ever know. I 
I've had the opportunity to go to Texas a few times, David, and do some little team roping, try to anyway. And I love Texas. It's a great place. And I'm glad you're going home to be with your daughter and your son and your grandbabies. That's where you need to be. And you will always be a part of the Memorial Baptist Church family. You have guided us and directed us out of a debt that we had. Your vision saw that we are financially healthy. Your vision saw and taught us grace and how to forgive and how to go through change and how to have mercy. When the waves of adversity were washing over you, and I'm sure you thought about giving up, you didn't. You guided us through the storm, always steering us to the cross. Always steering us to the cross. Each and every time you came to this pulpit, you were prepared 100%. You knocked it out of the park every time. You were prepared. You love to teach. You love to teach the word. Today, I was looking for the scars that we shared. And you know what? They were gone. Scars were lifted. The battle scars were gone because of love. Sometimes we're a little bit slow to learn as Christians, but you taught us to learn. And as we search for a new pastor to fill your shoes, it's going to be a tough task. But you've taught us to be able to show them grace and compassion. And to be kind. <clears throat> and I thank you. I have a uh, fellow Texan named Mr. George Strait. He wrote a song. And a lot of this applies to you and Diane. Now, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> you got death. <laughs> or you need my hanky. But these are the words of that song, and I'd like to share them with you. I've been on the road now dang near all my life. And I do love, I change a little bit to preach the word. I can say I've worked hard and put in my time. Now it's time to go home. <clears throat> and catch up on my chores. Watch the sunset from my porch. I'll be somewhere down in Texas if you're looking for me. Drinking in that great wide open, soaking up the summer breeze. Kicking back and settled in with my family. I'll be somewhere down in Texas if you're looking for me. That's where I got started, where I was born and bred. You weren't born and bred there, you're an Okie, but I think your wife was. It's a fire inside of me. I couldn't imagine this Texas highway led far beyond my wildest dreams, but I'll turn out the lights tonight and say, good night, not goodbye. I'll be somewhere down in Texas if you're looking for me. Drinking in that great wide open, soaking up the summer breeze. Kicking back and settled in with my family, 
I'll be somewhere down in Texas if you're looking for me. I made so many friends. Hope we meet someday again. Till then, I'll be somewhere down in Texas if you're looking for me. Drinking in that grave wide open. Soaking up so quick. <clears throat> My friend, don't be surprised if you see me down in Texas. <laughs> Sitting on that front porch with you. Taking in that grade wide open. And soaking in. Something freeze. We love you. We adore you. And we're going to be in touch with you. You're going to hear from us so much, it's like you never left. God bless you and our First Lady. I know you all are used to seeing me in my fancy heels every Sunday morning, but uh, I wore my boots. <laughs> Because I love my boots and I wear boots a lot during the week when you all don't see me. But um, I love my boots and I guess maybe deep, deep down in the heart of Texas, I think I'm a Texan. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, there's the old saying, you don't really know somebody in, until you live with them or work with them. And boy, we all know that's very true. Um, I could tell you lots of great stories about Mark. Um, but I want to share one thing um, with you today that has been special to me about Mark from the very first day he showed up. I, I love, as you know, the little children of this church, and it's been such a joy to watch them grow up from the little wees to the jazzies to the youth. I've played in a lot of their weddings and sang in their weddings. And, and now we have some of the children of those children that are back here at the church. I want to say how thankful I have been from the very first day that Mark Jones walked in this door. That he not only has loved all the big kids at the church, but he's loved the little kids and everything in between. And because he had so many years in youth ministry, and he shared lots of stories with us about that over the years, um, he ha always has a heart for those kids, and it's a good thing. Because three different times in the seven and a half years that he's been here, Mark Jones has had to step in and fill in some shoes while we waited for the next person to come. Now, not every pastor could do that, um, but Mark Jones did. And you know what? On days when um, it caught me off guard, Mark Jones never flinched. I flinched a lot. I flinched for everybody behind the scenes. Mark Jones never flinched. He said, well, let's just do it. Here we go. And you'll see on the front of our bulletin um, some examples of him being a kid at heart, getting a pie in the face. Um, the one here in the corner has got kids from what, that are who now are seniors, including Ethan up there, Ethan Avery, who is um, filming today and is a senior in high school and, and others. This was their sixth grade year, and Mark dressed up. He happened to be at my house helping with the youth progressive dinner. Um, he jumped in and loved on the children of this church and loved on the youth of this church and stepped in every time that he needed to to not just be the pastor that you saw here on Sunday mornings, and Bible study on Wednesdays, but so many things in between. I could say a lot more, but I'm not going to because I know that it will be hard for me to get through the rest of the service. I love you, and I love you. And this is a pastor that has shown grace and mercy and forgiveness in ways that I will never, ever forget and will take with me the rest of my life. Before we have one of our great youth, Noah, play a very special song, we're going to show you some video clips in case you're, you don't believe me that he stepped in and you know was the big kid doing youth stuff. Um, here's an example of some of the fun he had. 
But I, I, um, I did take a few notes. And Mark, you need to take test Texas speech lessons for David before you go to Texas. <laughs> Don't take singing lessons from Lacey. And if you're ever at a loss for words, ask Kathy. <laughs> I know she's got them. Um, I was sitting in the midway back with, uh, with my wife Patsy when um, she elbowed me and said, you said this was going to be a, a going away roast for Mark. And it's not. <laughs> you better think fast and scribble something down quick. <laughs> then she looked at me with those loving eyes of hers and she said, sometimes you're such a dipstick. <laughs> so, and Todd, where's Todd? He's sitting around here somewhere, I don't know where. But uh, Todd, I gotta say that you are very good at following instructions. Understand that Kathy told you, I mean, suggested that you find someone who's been around this church for quite a while. In fact, she said, quote, I've gotten, Robbie Atkins was weaned on Memorial Baptist Church. <laughs> Kathy, news, news alert. I was in uh, kindergarten or first grade when we started. I think I was finished with weaning by that time. I, I don't know. <laughs> but... Uh, We'll be coming up on 61 years, maybe, here. And Chambers is getting old back there, I can tell, because he was there from the beginning also. I'm not sure exactly who else is in here. But um, having been look, having being asked to, oh, I forgot, Mark. This was, Mark and I exchanged Christmas gifts, and so this was the first Christmas gift he gave me. And it's the first time I've worn it. <laughs> so worn it for you. <laughs> um, but having been asked to speak, I was looking at uh, kind of, you know, the Scrooge kind of thing, the past, present, and future. I'm like, well, that theme's already been used. But uh, I thought, okay, I'm going to look at before Mark, during Mark, and afterward. I had a hard time letting go of the past before Mark. I um, shouldn't have. I thought I was young enough to accept change, but that's, I was 16 when Pastor Temple, who was 26, came to be our pastor. Um, he was here a long time, 40, maybe a couple years, I don't know. But in that time, I started to grow up. I got married, had children, became a deacon in this church, uh, taught high school Sunday school class for a while, worked the media booth with Kathy staring at me all the time up here, <laughs> and lost my dad in 2013. I grew up a lot, as many of us have to do in life. We have to grow up. To change that, back in the day, we used to have endearing nicknames when a couple of us got close to each other, it was never, you know, hey, Robbie, whatever, whatever, whatever. It was, uh, my name was Rob the Slob. <laughs> uh, Louis Cash's name was Lou the Screw. My brother Billy was Bill the Pill. And we could never think of one for the other guy, Myers. It just didn't work. After Temple retired, Bill Smith came, uh, stepped in as interim pastor, and thank you, Bill. Did a wonderful job. Then came change, and along came Mark. I don't think that's the way that song's supposed to go, though, is it? I don't, anyway, um, so this is the during stage. As we got to know each other, he would always greet me with, Rob Atkins, great American. <laughs> Looking back, I'm sure I wasn't the only one he said that to. <laughs> but what the hey, I liked it. And if anything, it was a challenge to maybe be better. Back then, I worked the sound and video 
booth upstairs. Sometimes I did both jobs. Um, that's when I got the most stares from somebody. But, um, <laughs> and boy, when Mark came, there was a big change. Mark just didn't stand here and deliver a sermon. He moved. <laughs> he went from one side to the other side, back to the choir, up to y'all. It's like, holy crap. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> By the Cowboy time I, Cowboy church. Cowboy church, yeah. By the time I got the dag on camera on Mark and got it focused, he'd moved again. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but Mark had his own style, and I, for one, um, had trouble keeping up with it. And not just with the sermons, but with his enthusiasm, his enthusiastic approach for just about everything that I encountered with him. Well, my life moved on. My mother passed in 2015. My wife, Frances, died in 2016. My daughters got married, and they had families. And Patsy and I were married in August of 2019. Mark, you were there. Well, not when they made the families, but I mean, you were there <laughs> for, for everything. You were part of our lives, and I'll always remember you for that. But Mark, let's really take a good look at your preaching. <laughs> and this is on a personal level. Now I can see that you are really trying to reach me. I felt that you were looking directly at me, even though I was peering through a camera a lot. I, thought that you were looking directly at me, getting in my face, so to speak. Question me, Robbie Atkins, don't you get this? Listen to what God is telling you. Just listen. Mark, I've really been trying to listen, but there's a lot of static out there. But I'm trying. And thank you for that. <clears throat> Now you and Diane are leaving us. As children of God, we have come together as this church to pray and help our shepherd, Mark. You mean more to us than we can totally express to you. Being an old Beatles fan, in fact, I sang a song, you know, at the wedding, for those of you who are there. But there's an old George Harrison song called Blow Away. And some of the lyrics, here's some of them, and I, I'm sorry, I, I feel like I'm copying Lacey quoting lyrics, but I'm not going to do the whole song. I did change one word. And the thing, it goes, day turned to black, sky ripped apart, rained for a year till it dampened my heart. All I've got to do is to love you. All I've got to be is to be happy. All it's got to take is the Lord to make it blow away. Sky cleared up. Day turned to bright. Closing both eyes, my head's filled with his light. All I've got to do is to love you. All I've got to be is to be happy. All it's got to take is the Lord to make it blow away, blow away. Oh, and as for nicknames or rather labels to be put down, please wear this label for me. Mark Jones, a great Christian who truly loves Jesus. Thank you.
For the record, I'm not from Texas, <laughs> but I did try to dress in Oklahoma State Cowboys colors, but I didn't have a black tie, so everyone just imagine it's a black tie. These are Oklahoma State colors. And actually works out well. Given Mark's love of football, I thought it fitting to frame my tribute to him around this, allowing me to be a little lighthearted in the process. It's necessary because I'm allergic to something up here because every time I'm talking, my eyes start watering. So. <laughs> and also the fact that for five years, I've been up in the booth running Mark's slideshows. So I think it's only fitting that I have a slideshow for Mark. <clears throat> I give you the parable of the football. From time immemorial, there have been countless battles fought between God and the devil over people's souls. This is the story of one such battle that ended right here at Memorial Baptist Church, an imaginary football game pitting God's mighty disciples against the devil's demons. In this game, there was a single football being used. We'll call it Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> the devil was pretty confident about victory as his team had carried the ball the length of the field during Ralph's early years and felt that a touchdown was imminent. Then, out of nowhere, a new player, dedicated Deb Kirtland, <laughs> ran onto the field and on the very next play, blindsided the devil with a strip sack, recovering the dropped ball, Ralph, and claiming it for herself. While she had kept the devil from scoring, dedicated Deb simply didn't have enough of a team around her to move the ball forward. The devil's defense was strong and seemed to thwart her at every turn. To make matters worse, and as anyone who's played the game will tell you, the ball will sometimes go wherever it wants, like it has a mind of its own. God could see that Deb needed help, so he sent in his veteran quarterback, Temple the Man Myers. No, see, it says Myers. <laughs> Temple needed help on the offensive line, so the prayer warriors from the Promise Gals class stepped up to ensure that the ball was safe and moving forward. Temple rounded out the team with running back Ben the Steamroller Sprouts and the Deacons at receiver. Kathy and others provided the much needed motivational music so all was set. Temple's calm demeanor and strong faith steadied the team and the ball slowly progressed down the field, though it was tough going. The devil and his demons were in a tight defense and did not give up ground easily. They really wanted the ball back. When it felt at times like two steps forward and one step back, God's mighty disciples were able to keep, the, keep grinding ahead. It was just as they'd reached midfield, though, that Temple the Man Myers called his last play. God surveyed his bench and knew just who to call up, Seminary Bill Smith. <laughs> That's my favorite slide. <laughs> Bill's vast knowledge of scripture and his patient understanding would be just the thing to stymie the vaunted demon defense. Bill's ability to throw out the perfect verse at the perfect time had God's mighty disciples once again marching the ball down the field toward the goal and salvation. Bill and team ground out another 30 yards, getting them into the red zone. Only 20 yards to go. It was at this point that God looked once again to his bench for the perfect weapon to get through the devil's demonic defense. God grinned as he knew the choice was obvious. obvious. Marvelous Mark Jones. <laughs> Did I get the hair right? Is that... <laughs> Mark was on the field in a flash, itching to get the ball over the goal line. 
He looked around him and was pleased with the team he'd been given. Truly a group of God's mighty disciples. Dedicated Deb and the Promise Gals were still putting up a wall of prayer while the deacons were ready and waiting for anything Mark would throw their way. Mark knew he needed just a little more, so he brought on the stewards class as his tight end to guard the ball and keep it moving in the right direction. Play after play, Mark moved the ball closer and closer to the goal line. But play after play, the ball seemed to resist going into the end zone. Something more was still needed. Would it be a run up the middle, a run pass option, sweet flea flicker, Statue of Liberty? I've got it, Mark said in the huddle. <laughs> there isn't anyone who can resist salvation once they've established a personal relationship with God. Mark was pulling out all the stops now and going with his most trusted plays from the experiencing God playbook. Surely this would do it. The devil doesn't go down easily and made one goal line stand after another, but even the devil cannot contain the power of God. And on the third play from experiencing God, Mark, with God's hand in his back, guided the ball across the goal line and into the kingdom of God. Touchdown! <laughs> A thrilling victory for Mark and God's mighty disciples indeed, but even more importantly, another soul saved. Me. But there's more. <clears throat> it's not a cowboy hat to learn. <clears throat> These are the new team colors of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. And Mark, this is to remind you that in my book, you're number one. that I'm a thankful one. Garden allergies? <laughs> Thank you. All right, at this time, Jazzy Juniors all over the room come forward, Jazzy Juniors. Didn't have much money, 
but you gave it anyway. Jesus took that gift you gave, and that's why I'm here today. So thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Wonderful tributes have been given. I want to add my words, quoting from Paul the Apostle, words that all of us can say. We give thanks to God for every remembrance of you, always praying with joy, with joy for you. A few weeks ago, you invited me to preach, and I had opportunity to say a, a few words at that time, my appreciation for you. Uh, I'm glad you're feeling well enough to be here today. It's a blessing to all of us, and uh, for me to be able to say something personal to you publicly. Uh, I know a little bit of retirement experiences. I've retired eight times. <laughs> When I retired from Memorial Baptist Church in Arlington, a deacon came to the pulpit uh, podium to say a tribute for me. And he had been in the church 50 plus years. And he said, Bill, of all the pastors we've ever had, you're the most recent. Well, you know what? Of all the tributes I've ever received, that's the one I remember. 
And it was just a, a joke. But through the years, it's come to mean a great deal to me because I realize there are people who came before me. There were people who will come after me. Some of those people thought I was fantastic. Some of them thought I was the opposite of fantastic. Most people were somewhere in between, I'm sure. But a preacher once said words I've remembered. Please God, doesn't matter who you displease. Displease God, doesn't matter who you please. Mark, you have pleased God. You are a preacher of the gospel. And you live the gospel. I made a long list of tributes, words that came to my mind when I thought of you. I'm just going to say two, three. And, and they're really kind of words especially mean something to me. I'm trying to learn from you. Cheerful and courteous and courageous. You gave the best sermon I've ever heard on suffering. It was biblical. It was heartfelt. It will always reside in my heart. I took notes on it. I'm keeping it and using it. But it's one thing to say words about suffering. It's altogether different to live the suffering and to teach us to say the prayer that never fails. Thy will be done. Mark Jones, you've taught us in word and deed, God bless you as you have blessed us. Amen.
Mr. Bowman, are you joining us? So there have been a few presentations this morning uh, from various speakers, and there's, there's at least two more, and I'm sure that there's some that are gonna happen during the reception time. Um, but one of the things that has gotten passed around over the past month is this prayer book. And you've seen it, uh, you saw it when we had our prayer vigil. Well, the church has taken the time to not only sign their names, but also write you. words of encouragement and I know that not everybody has had an opportunity and so we're, we're still going to have this sitting on a podium inside the Great Hall so when you come in if you would like to put something in here please do so we might even hang on to it for another week so that people can continue to write in it and we'll give it to you before you leave and so this this is just words of appreciation from your church family and then there was also, you want to, yes, we'll let Mr. Reeves address this. Mark. We're going to hope to eat more than you and I think you know about, right? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Enough of that. I'm sorry, guys. Mark's very special to me. Good friend. Mark, we honor you for your tireless, tireless perseverance in serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As our shepherd, we thank you, and we thank God for the deep compassion, generosity of your spirit, and the vision for God's justice you have shared with your flock. May you always know what a difference you make in the world by reflecting the joy of the Lord, the heart of Jesus, and the fruit of the Spirit. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you both in the palm of his hands. We have a special presentation, a special love offering that we'd like to present to you. Who's in charge of the money in the house? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. This church loves you. And this is a very special love offering from everyone here. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Before, before we have the benediction, just some words about what's going to come next. Um, immediately following the closing of the service, we're going to enter into a special business meeting. Uh, if you are a member of the church, you are more than welcome to stay. If you're not, uh, we would ask that you would adjourn to the Great Hall and just uh, visit with Mark and Diane in there. And then when we finish with our, our short business meeting, we will all head into the Great Hall for a time of fellowship and some snacks and things like that. It is my opportunity to uh, close out the service with you, uh, to give you a benediction, but before I do that, what a blessing it has been to be your pastor for the past seven and a half years. I wish I had more time to talk, we're already an hour, uh, 30 minutes over and my voice is limited but you are very special to me there was no way that when God called me into ministry uh, I thought I would ever pastor a church like this and no way that I've ever thought I'd be in this part of Virginia but God has been such a blessing to us through you and uh, I appreciate so much the, the tributes, the music, 
the things said and will be said and uh, written. But through this all, I, I hope that this service has, has been as it always should be to the glory of God. That's why I'm here. That's why I came. That's why I accepted your call to be your pastor for the glory and the purpose of God. Let me close you with a benediction out of First Thessalonians 2, 19 through 20. For what is our hope, our joy, or the crown in which we glory in, in the presence of Jesus Christ? Indeed, you are our crown, crown and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you.